Very good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, all of you. So last class we have been discussing about the methods of preparations of hydrogen gas and after that methods of preparation we are uh, good to start with the different types of compounds of hydrogen what are different types of compounds of hydrogen we'll have the first type is going to be respect to hydrides yes or no the hydrides of uh, hydrogen how many types of hydrides we have ionic hydrides covalent hydrides as well as interstitial hydrides if you start with the binary compounds of hydrogen are called as hydrides hydrides are of three types uh, that are as under ionic hydrides covalent hydrides as well as interstitial hydrides right ionic or salt like or saline hydrides if you go with this ionic hydrides are formed by s block elements except uh, beryllium and magnesium ionic hydrides they are actually formed by s block elements except uh, beryllium and magnesium whereas beryllium and magnesium will also form the respect to hydrides they form covalent hydrides beryllium and magnesium they form they form covalent hydrides and also bh2 and mgh2 are actually polymeric in nature beryllium hydride bh2 and magnesium hydride mgh2 are polymeric in nature they are actually polymeric in nature and we also have ionic hydrides are non crystal or crystalline non conducting and non volatile ionic hydrides we have respect to uh, cations and anions you, these cations and anions will be present at the lattice sites like if the large size anion generally form the lattice small size cation they will be present at the interstitial sites so what you can say ionic hydrides are crystalline non conducting and non volatile non conducting because there are no free electrons and free ions and non volatile because of strong electrostatic force of attraction between these hydrides they are not volatile in nature but in their molten state they can act as conductors non conducting in solid state in a molten state they can act as they can act as conductors and these form complex hydrides which are good reducing agents like lithium hydride if you take lithium hydride will be reacting with aluminum chloride to form lithium aluminum hydride and lithium chloride yes or no what you can say lithium hydride will be reacting with alcl3 to form lalh4 what is lalh4 lithium aluminum hydride is a very good reducing reducing agent. agent okay lithium aluminum hydride is a very good redu reducing agent and sodium hydride will also react with water uh, vigorously nah also reacts nah reacts with water vigorously to form to form h2 gas that is you can say nah na plus and h minus that will be reacting with water so where you have partial negative one oxygen partial positive one hydrogen h minus will try to pick up the proton and it will release the h2 gas along with the h2 gas we get na plus oh minus that is naoh is formed naoh is also going to be formed and structure of this type of hydrates is also similar to rock salt structure that is why they are known as salt like or saline like hydrates they are also similar to possess a structure like rock salt structure is that clear students yes sir yes yeah. right next type of hydrates interstitial hydrates earlier it was found that these interstitial uh, hydrates are those hydrates where the interstitial positions in the crystal of the parent metal were occupied by hydrogen 
but later it was found that some of the interstitial hydrates have different uh, crystal structure when compared to the original lattice when compared to the original lattice they found to have a different crystal structure right another point earlier it was found that hydrogen occupies interstitial positions of of metal lattices but later it is found that the interstitial hydrides interstitial hydrides will have different structure will have found that some of the interstitial not all some of the interstitial hydrides some of the interstitial hydrides has will have different structure different crystal structure than the metal than the pure metal okay but later found that interstitial hydrates have a complete different structure than the pure metal uh, ex except for we have few elements like uh, nickel palladium platinum cerium as well as actinium except for nickel platinum palladium cerium and actinium that is why these metals are used in the hydrogenation okay that like these crystal metal lattices they will have hydrogen actually present in the interstitial sites that is why that is why these metals were used in hydrogenation because in the interstitial sites of these metals you have hydrogen presence you cannot use any metal like i am using magnesium in the interstitial uh, in the hydrogenation of alkanes hydrogenation of alkanes to form alkanes i am using magnesium or iron no why because we are preferentially choosing those catalysts where the interstitial positions were actually occupied by some of the hydrogen or which has a tendency for them to occupy the uh, to gain the hydrogen at the interstitial positions these hydrates are formed by d and f block elements properties are like parent metal these are non stoichiometric in nature example if i take lanthanum will be forming a hydride h will be 2.87 lah 2.87 titanium h 1.5 to 1.8 so etc like these are non stoichiometric in nature and elements of group number 7 8 9 do not form hydro uh, interstitial hydrates and that is why these groups are said to be this is nothing but your respect to hydride gap elements of group number 7 8 9 they do not form interstitial hydrides and that is nothing but your hydride gap is that clear or not interstitial hydrides yes, and all sir. Sir. right then comes the covalent hydrides covalent hydrides are again classified into three types what are those electron deficient electron precise <laughs> electron rich covalent hydrides these hydrides uh, these type of hydrides are formed from p block elements in the p block element which group is going to form electron deficient hydrides boron boron family electron precise hydrides form the which group carbon family carbon family electron rich hydrides nitrogen oxygen and respective group of halogens right electron deficient electron precise and electron uh, rich hydrides electron deficient means hydrates having less than 8 electrons less than 8 valence electrons example hydrates of group 13 like bh3 alh3 gh3 in all these case we have only 6 electrons around the central atom electron precise hydrates that is hydrates having 8 valence electrons example hydrates of group 14 you can take the case of ch4 sh4 
where you have exactly eight electrons around the central atom. Here you have less than eight electrons, like six electrons only there. Electron rich hydrates means hydrates having at least one lone pair of central atom. Like uh, ammonia, PH3, H2, if you take, the central atom has octet electronic configuration, like two, like H2O if you consider, in H2O we have two OH bonds, like two bond pairs and two lone pairs. So in total around oxygen we have eight electrons. So oxygen also has lone pair. So because of that lone pair, it can be using it lone pair to attack any electron deficient center. So that is why it will be coming under the category of electron rich hydrates. It will be coming under the category of electron rich hydrates. Electron deficient, electron precise, electron rich. So these are the three hydrates which are coming under the category of your covalent hydrates, okay? So ionic hydrates or salt-like hydrates, interstitial hydrates, and covalent hydrates. Ionic hydrates formed by S-block elements. Interstitial will be formed by D and F. Covalent hydrates will be formed by P-block. Try to solve this question. Out, the, out of the following metals, which will give H2 gas on reaction with NaOH? On reaction with NaOH, which of the following metals will uh, release H2 gas? As I have told you, amphotic metals will release H2 gas. What are those amphotic metals? Zinc, Zinc aluminum, beryllium. Beryllium. So, 1, 3, and 4. B. Option B will be the right option. And next comes comes the category like chemical and physical properties of H2. So chemical and physical properties of hydrogen. Chemical and physical properties of H2 dihydrogen. If you can think of H2, H2 is a colorless, tasteless, odorless, and combustible gas. It is colorless, odorless, tasteless, and combustible gas. It is lighter than air and it is insoluble in water. Okay. It is lighter than air and insoluble in water why as h2 is non-polar and water is polar h2 is non-polar and water is polar that is why it is insoluble in water and uh, by studying the bond dissociation energy, we can say that H2 has one of the uh, strongest single bond. In H2, in H2, the bond dissociation energy will be very high. The bond dissociation energy will be very high as the oneness atomic orbital of one hydrogen atom overlaps with oneness atomic orbital of other hydrogen. Oneness, oneness overlapping will be very strong overlapping because small size. Because of that strong overlapping, we have Oneness, oneness overlapping is going to be a strong overlapping because of that the bond energy is going to be greater. But also HF, but HF bond energy, bond energy is greater when compared to H2 bond energy. HF bond energy will be greater when compared to H2 bond energy even though hydrogen, hydrogen single bond is going to be the one of the strongest bond. HF bond is even stronger when compared to H2 bond. At a 2000 Kelvin, only 0.08% exists in atomic hydrogen. At a 2000 Kelvin, only 0.08% exists in atomic hydrogen. And at a 5000 Kelvin, 
95% exist in the atomic hydrogen. 95% exist in atomic hydrogen. That means you can understand 5000 Kelvin should be the temperature to we have to maintain such that 95% of the H2 molecule will be existing in the hydrogen atom that is atomic hydrogen. Thus we can say from this we can say from the above percentages from the above percentages we can say H2 is we can say H2 is relatively inert. All these points are clear or not? Yes, sir. Yes or no? We can say H2 is relatively inert at room temperature. Relatively inert at a room temperature. Because at 2000 Kelvin only, only 0.08% existing in the atomic hydrogen form. At 5000 Kelvin, we have 95% in the atomic hydrogen form. At room temperature, almost 100% will exist in the H2 form only. No atomic hydrogen form. Let us look at the reactions. H2 will be, H2 will have a reaction with the halogens, with oxygen, with nitrogen, with the metals. Different types of reactions can be seen with H2. Yes or no? So let us try to understand the reaction of H2 with halogens. H2 will be reacting with halogens to form HX. Reaction with F2 occurs even in dark as F2 is highly reactive. First point you can consider is with halogens with the halogens h2 reacts with halogens h2 reacts with the halogens h2 reacts with halogens to form to form hx that is h2 plus x2 will be forming two hx you can also write reaction with the fluorine occurs even in dark and here X is nothing but fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Reaction with fluorine. Reaction with fluorine occurs even in dark. Why? As F2 is highly reactive. And for the reaction with iodine, we need a catalyst. And for the reaction, With I2, we need a catalyst. And reaction with chlorine and bromine, they are going to be moderate reactions where the kinetics of such reactions can be easily studied. Fluorine reaction will happen even in the dark condition because of high reactivity of F2. And reaction with iodine, for the reaction with iodine, we also need a catalyst. And H2 will also react with oxygen with oxygen what we can say h2 will be reacting with uh, oxygen 2h2 plus o2 will form 2h2o but this reaction will occur at normal temperature or very high temperature very high okay the reaction occurs only at very high temperature why because h2 and o2 are itself very stable stable very good the reaction occurs only at very high temperature at a very high temperature. Uh, with the nitrogen, can we think of reaction? H2, N2 plus 3H2. N2 plus 3H2 will be forming respect to 2NH3. And the reaction maintained in the presence of iron as a catalyst, molybdenum as a promoter, and the Temperature is high. Generally, low temperature has to be maintained, but for the optimum yield, we have high temperature maintained so that the reaction between the two uh, reactant molecules is going to be happening greatly, such that the collisions is going to greatly. That is, H2 is used in the preparation of H2 is used in the preparation of ammonia. Next reaction we can think of is with metals. With the metals, what kind of reaction we can have? H2 reacts with metals to form respect to metallic hydrides. Like two metal plus H2 will be forming respect to MH, M plus H minus 2MH. Two metal solid H2 gas will be forming 2MH. 
रिएक्शन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन रिएक्शन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन विथ मेटल्स एट हाई टेम्परेचर विल लीड टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ विल लीड टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ मेटालिक हाइड्राइड्स फॉर्मेशन ऑफ मेटालिक हाइड्राइड्स एंड इफ वी टेक वन ए एंड टू ए लाइक एस ब्लॉक एलिमेंट देन यू विल बी फॉर्मिंग रेस्पेक्ट टू आयोनिक और साल्ट लाइक हाइड्रेट्स रेस्पेक्ट टू आयोनिक और साल्ट लाइक हाइड्रेट्स एंड सम मेटल आयोन्स कैन ऑल्सो रियक्ट विद एच टू टू फॉर्म एच प्लस आयोन्स एंड मेटल वी लुक एट दो रियक्शन ऑल्सो सम मेटल आयोन्स ऑल्सो रियक्ट विथ एच टू to form h plus ions and metal let us take a reaction arbitrary reaction like m plus 2 is a metal ion which is taking up two electrons to form metal m and h2 is actually releasing out two h plus and two electrons we are talking about the some metal ions also react with h2 metal ion reacting with h2 m2 plus plus h2 Two electron, two electron gets cancelled out. You are getting M plus two H plus. So this was the reaction we are talking. Metal ions reacting with H two to form metal and two H plus. For this reaction to be happening, so what we need? So if E one is the electrode potential of first reaction, E two is the electrode potential of second reaction. So what is the electrode potential net? E naught of net. E one. E cathode minus E anode. Yes. E naught of M two plus two M. Plus E naught of H two to H plus. So oxidation potential of a uh, oxidation potential of anode plus reduction potential of cathode. So E naught of M two plus two M is E E one. That is nothing but like E naught. You can say E one naught and E two naught. E one naught plus E two naught. If E naught of net is equals to which is E one naught plus E two naught. If that is positive. If uh, and what is E naught of H two to H plus? That is nothing but zero or not? Zero, yes sir. Yes or no? So that is nothing but what I can say. E naught of net is E naught of M two plus two M. So if uh, E naught of net uh, is greater than zero, that means delta G will be less than e zero. E naught of yes, E naught of M two plus two M. If that is E naught of net is nothing but E naught of M two plus two M. So E naught of M two plus two M, if that is greater than zero, then only E naught net is zero. Under that condition, we can have delta G less than zero. Since delta G is equals to delta G naught is equals to minus N F E naught. So can I say E naught of M two plus two M is standard reduction potential of metal that should be greater than zero means it should be below hydrogen or above hydrogen. Below hydrogen. Below hydrogen. Therefore, therefore. The metal ions below hydrogen will react below hydrogen in electrochemical series. Electrochemical series will react with H two will react with the H two to form. H plus ions and metal. Okay, this was the condition. So like that, we can actually understand. So what type of reactions are, uh, what type of metal ions will be reacting with H two to form the respect to H plus ions, and uh, uh, H plus ions and metal is also obtained. H two will also react with organic compounds. With organic compounds, also the reaction will occur. What type of reaction will happen with organic compound? Like H2 will be reacting with a CO plus some alkene like RCH double bond CH2. Hydro formation of alkene seals aldehydes. Hydro formation of alkenes yield. Aldehydes 
we can try to write down this reaction h2 plus co plus r ch double bond ch2 will form r ch2 ch2 c double bond o h that means h2 and co is nothing but hc double bond o h that hc double bond o h is nothing but uh, formal group hydroformylation that has been done to alkenes to form respect to aldehydes the mechanism you don't worry that is not required and the aldehydes thus formed will be reacting with a uh, any reducing agents to form respect to alcohols the aldehydes thus formed will react with a will be further reduced further reduced to alcohols you can say r ch2 ch2 c double bond oh that can be undergoing redu reduction in the presence of h2 that means h2 is going to be added further r ch2 ch2 so to this particular carbon hydrogen is going to be added so you get r coh ch2 r ch2 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 oh that is nothing but the alcohol obtained from uh, alcohol obtained from the reduction of respect to aldehydes which are obtained by the hydro uh, hydro formulation of olefins hydro formulation of olefins that is yielding the aldehydes those aldehydes are reduced to respect to alcohols is all the reactions clear or not students yes sir yes or no different different chemical properties and physical properties with respect to hydrogen gas h2 gas has been seen so that is the first commercially important uh, compound or the first compound of uh, hydrogen h2 gas is the first compound of hydrogen next you can think of is water next compound is water water or h2 yes or no water we all know the importance of water so without water there is no life water is a major part of all living system without water there is no life first you can write down those points it is the major constituent it is a major constituent of all living systems and without it there is no life and without h2o there is no life right and similarly we have to look at the uh, structure like properties of water physical as well as chemical properties we will look at the physical properties first then we will try to understand the chemical properties if you look at the structure of water h2o has a bent structure with a two lone pair of electrons on oxygen atom and its polar it's a polar molecule because we have oh bond where electron age difference is there and it is having a high dielectric constant it has a bent structure h2o oxygen and two oh bonds partial negative one oxygen partial positive one hydrogen it has a bent structure with the two lone pair of electrons on oxygen it has bent structure with two lone pair of electrons on oxygen atom and it is polar polar in nature with high dielectric constant with a high dielectric constant and most of the water where it is found it is most of the water is found in oceans and after oceans what is the second source of water yes, glaciers glaciers yes, sir, no. most of the water is found in the oceans then glaciers most of the water is in oceans and the and then glaciers right you can also understand the bond angle in water is 104 degrees and bond length is 95.7 picometer or 96 approximately bond angle 104.5 degrees and bond length approximately 96 picometer
and what is the like the crystalline form of water is ice and at normal atmospheric pressure ice exists in hexagonal form right on the point under the normal atmospheric pressure it exists in hexagonal form but at very low temperature it crystallizes in the cubic form the crystalline form of water the crystalline form of water is ice and at a normal atmospheric pressure ice crystallizes in ice crystallizes in hexagonal form but at very low temperatures at a very low temperatures it crystallizes in cubic form at very low temperatures it will be crystallizing in the cubic form at normal atmosphere atmospheric pressure it will crystallize in the hexagonal form and its density is less than water that is why it floats on water its a density is less than water and that is why it floats on water the density is less than the density of h2o and that is why ice will be floating on water ice because of its hexagonal crystal structure it will be acting as a thermal insulator as and because of this property only whatever the ice formed on the surface of the water body like we have a pond where the temperature is very low on the surface of the pond we have ice formation because of the formation of ice on the surface the low temperature which was present in the atmosphere that is not going to be transferred to the water present below below that particular ice layer because it is not a thermal conductor it is a thermal insulator because of that only only the ice is going to be formed on the surface of the water body below that the h2o exists in the liquid state only because of that only aquatic life is going to be safe due to it's the crystal structure it's a crystal lattice due to its crystal lattice structure it crystallizes in uh, due to its crystal lattice structure it it acts as thermal insulator it acts as thermal insulator and thus ice will be formed only on the surface only on the surface of water bodies but inside the surface h2o exists in liquid state only which saves the aquatic life right then if you go with the chemical properties of water chemical properties of water water will be amphotic in nature that means water can react with acid as well as base the first property which you can think of is amphotic nature amphotic nature of water water can react with acid and base water can react with acid and base example if you try to look at the reaction of water with ammonia water because of the presence of like water will have two lone pairs of electron two lone pairs of electrons on oxygen atom ammonia will have one lone pair of electron on nitrogen as yes i know ammonia will have one lone pair of electrons on nitrogen water will have two lone pairs of electrons on oxygen so lone pair of electron present on nitrogen that can easily pick up the proton 
as soon as the lone pair of electron present on nitrogen picks up the proton what is going to happen the lone pair of electron nitrogen that can pick up the proton as soon as this proton is picked up by nitrogen it forms nh4 plus three nh bonds are as it is and the fourth nh bond is formed along with the positive charge because nitrogen has seen the loss in electron density so lone pair of electrons and nitrogen has been lost so nitrogen develops a positive charge and oh electron density has been given to oxygen so that is why it will develop oh minus ion so that means nh4 oh can be formed you can also think of other way oxygen possessing two lone pairs of electrons and we have nh3 lone pair of electron oxygen that can also pick up this proton so nh electron density can be moving towards nitrogen developing h3o plus oxygen will have only one lone pair three oh bonds and a positive charge and nitrogen will have a negative charge along with lone pair and two nh bonds that is h3o plus and nh2 minus which is stable like which reaction is correct first one 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 why can't the second one water will be reacting with ammonia if you look at the reaction of water with ammonia in the first reaction what i have written lone pair of electron present on nitrogen they are picking up the proton to form nh4 plus and oh minus in the second reaction what you have written water react with ammonia lone pair of electron oxygen picks up the proton forming respect to h3o plus and nh2 minus which reaction is correct like if you take the first reaction ammonia is acting as a respect to base if you take the second reaction water is acting as a respect to lewis base electron pair do not is a lewis base which reaction is correct more acidic hydrogen h2o suman says yes that is also one of the reason but also the polarity is also there in nh bond also and we have two lone pairs on oxygen only one lone pair on nitrogen we have two lone pairs on oxygen but only one lone pair on nitrogen the actual reality is when compared to when compared to nitrogen oxygen is more electronegative the more electronegative oxygen withhold the lone pair of electrons on oxygen greatly so lone pair of electrons on oxygen will be stabilized lone pair of electron present on more electronegative atom is more stable so oxygen will withhold the lone pair less electronegative nitrogen it can't withhold the lone pair greatly so its attack is correct so this will be the first one is a correct attack second one is wrong attack we can say nitrogen is less electronegative less electronegative and thus lone pair on nitrogen will attack firstly will attack h plus will attack h2o h plus from h2o okay clear or not yes sir yes yes right so in this reaction the first one is a correct reaction and in this reaction what is acting as an acid or a base from the water h plus ion is lost acid so from, like nh3 is a respect to lewis base what is acting as a respect to acid as h plus ion is lost from the respect to water so amphotic nature of water means water can react with acid as well as base so reaction of water with the base we have seen so now reaction of acid uh, reaction of water with the acid can also be seen so now h2o can also be reacting if you try to draw the structure of h2o hydrogen is connected with the two uh, hydrogen is connected with oxygen or oxygen connected with two hydrogens reaction with uh, reaction of water with h2s h2s we have lone pair of electron present on oxygen that can be attacking the proton so that sh electron density will move towards uh, sulfur forming h3o plus one lone pair and positive charge and sh minus one lone pair and negative charge this is the first way of reaction second way of reaction lone pair of electron present on sulfur they can easily attack the partial positive charge hydrogen and forming h3s plus plus oh minus with one lone pair and negative charge out of these two which one is correct one first one first one why not second one compare the electronegativity of oxygen and sulfur which is more electronegative 
oxygen is more electronegative oxygen is more electronegative means then sulfur should attack right yes or no yes. sir but negative charge sulfur is more stabilized right because of its large sir large size yes the attack first you have to think of attack no so as i have told you again first one is the right option electronegativity is the dominant factor in a period is the dominant factor in a period in a period and in a group which is the dominant factor size you have to apply whenever i am comparing h2o and h2so you should not compare electronegativity you have to compare with respect to size whenever i am comparing h2o and h3 you have to compare with respect to electronegativity electronegativity is the dominant factor in a period and in a group size is the dominant factor okay we have discussed all these or not organic chemistry yes yes so we have to remember brush up all the concepts okay then these are the these, these are the reactions which support the amphotic nature of water then auto protolysis of water can also occur auto protolysis of water means water can react with one molecule of water can react with other molecule of water auto protolysis of water one molecule of water can be reacting with other molecule of water where the one molecule will be gaining the h plus ion and the other molecule loses the h plus ion so same h2o can act as an acid as well as base and there will be an establishment of equilibrium in this perspective like one h2o one h2o acts as acid acts as acid and the other acts as base and the other acts as base right and we can also have uh, redox reactions involving water we have hydrolysis reactions involving water we have hydrate formations many reactions are there so redox reactions involving water if you take that into perspective redox reactions involving water water will be reacting with a let us say any metal to form respect to h2 gas and a base is going to be obtained yes or no like let us to uh, think of reaction of sodium with h2 sodium has a tendency to form sodium has a tendency to form na plus and the electron is lost from the water we have oh minus ion oh minus can be attacking the respect to h plus to form naoh na plus oh minus and the h plus whatever it is lost h plus will be taking up an electron to form hydrogen atom so half mole of h2 gas can be evolved so na plus h2 gives us to naoh plus half mole of h2 and this is a source of hydrogen also okay this was a redox reaction of water where oxygen Uh, went from minus two to minus two only, but hydrogen here is in plus one state. Went to zero state. Sodium in zero state went to plus one state. Like oxidation and reduction both occurred. Yes or no? With the fluorine also similar reaction will occur. Fluorine will react with water to form H plus ions and the fluoride ions are obtained. Similarly, F two will be reacting with the water in the presence of F two will be reacting with water. to form respect to fluoride ions to form respect to f minus along with that o2 gas is obtained yes or no and h plus ions are also obtained so 2f2 if you try to write you can write a 24f minus 4f minus means 4h plus 4h plus means 2h2o from there you can say oxygen is also balanced oxygen went from minus 2 to zero state fluorine went from 0 to minus 1 state hydrogen is in plus 1 to plus 1 state only okay next type of reactions of water which you can think of is hydrolysis reactions hydrolysis reactions means what hydrolysis reactions hydrolysis reactions means in these reactions h2o will be acting as a reactant that means h2o undergoes a 
hydrolysis reactions in that h2o will be acting as a reactant it is also used up like it is a nucleophile like if you talk of esterification or, or uh, hydrolysis of ester in these reactions hydrolysis means in these reactions h2o will be acting as a acting as a reactant because we also have hydrate formations there h2o will not be acting as a reactant where it is just surrounded by the complex molecules in the hydrolysis reactions and hydrate formation there was a minute difference in the hydrate formation h2o is not the reactant it will be just surrounding the respective molecules whereas in hydrolysis reactions h2o will be a reacting and it will undergo the reactions in these reactions h2o will be acting as a reactant in these reactions h2o will be acting as a reactant and these reactions occur due to high dielectric constant of water reason we should understand no and these reactions occur these reactions occur due to high dielectric constant due to high dielectric constant of water with increase in dielectric constant what happens the dissociation the alpha increases so you can think of esterification reaction ch3 c double bond o o ch2 ch3 that is hydrolysis of ester i am talking about reverse is esterification this is hydrolysis of ester you will form ch3 c double bond oh plus ch3 ch2 oh and also you can think of reaction of some p4o10 p4o10 plus h2o will form what h3po4 hydrolysis of p4o10 will be generating respect to phosphoric acid so p4o10 plus h2o will be forming h3po4 you can say balancing it 6h2o in a hydrolysis reactions water will be acting as a reactant why this is uh, why this hydrolysis reactions are going to be happening because of higher dielectric constant of water and there are some other reactions where hydrate formation hydrate formations okay from aqua solution salts will generally be formed from aqua solutions from aqua solutions salts from aqua solutions salts will be salts will be generally hydrated generally hydrated and this hydration enthalpy is directly is directly proportional to and this hydration enthalpy is directly proportional to charge density charge density example group 2 salts like barium chloride if you take bacl2 will exist as 2h2o and also complex salts like uh, in a complex also we can have chromium complex crh2o taken 6 whole 3 plus and uh, 3 cl minus these are the counter ions this is a complex ion the complex ion and counter ions are present like wherever we have more charge density there will be there the extent of hydration will be great because of more extent of hydration you will be having respect to h2o molecules surrounding is that clear or not is everything clear so far yes sir so these are the like commercially important compounds of uh, hydrogen like uh, h2 gas is one important compound then the hydrogen the physical properties and chemical properties we have seen if you proceed further then we have the in the compounds of hydrogen only we have water where you have to look at the purification of water like water will exist as soft water and hard water rain water is actually uh, purest form of water but this rain water is going to fall on like uh, different different uh, parts of the uh, area where different kinds of salts are going to be dissolved because of the dissolution of different kinds of salts this rain water becomes hard the what type of impurities are generally present in rain water 
if you think of hardness of water okay water is actually uh, classified into soft water and hard water the salts of the salts of calcium and magnesium are responsible are responsible for hardness of water the salts of calcium and magnesium they are responsible for hardness of water what is actually classified as two types like soft water and hard water soft water means what water which produces sufficient lather with soap solution hard water means water which do not produce lather with soap solution so these like whatever the uh, salts of calcium and magnesium are there right they are going to be soluble and because of that solubility so they are not responsible uh, they they will not allow the lather formation easily so this hard water the hardness of water can be actually of two types temporary hardness and permanent hardness rain water is almost pure is almost uh, pure except some dissolved gases except the impurities like dissolved gases in water rain water is almost pure except the impurities like dissolved gas in water right and this rain water upon flowing from different mediums or different uh, perspectives different kinds of salts are going to be dissolving which causes the temporary hardness as well as permanent hardness temporary hardness is actually due to the what type of salts calcium and magnesium bicarbonates permanent hardness is due to the presence of calcium and magnesium chlorides and sulfates calcium and magnesium bicarbonates whenever we have that is causing the temporary hardness permanent hardness will be due to calcium and magnesium sulfate clear right yes sir yes sir temporary hardness is due to the presence of bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium permanent hardness is due to the presence of sulfates and chlorides of calcium and magnesium now we look at the methods of uh, removal of hardness that is removal of temporary hardness as well as permanent hardness so whatever the soluble bicarbonates you have like we have water bottle in that in that water bottle we have water which is hard water let us say we have bicarbonates which are soluble in nature the soluble bicarbonates were converted into insoluble carbonates if i can try to convert the soluble bicarbonates into insoluble carbonates then i can do the filtration and remove the carbonates that means whatever the soluble bicarbonates we have those soluble bicarbonates i have converted into insoluble carbonates and i have done the filtration because insoluble carbonates will settle down at the bottom and i can do the filtration and i can remove all the insoluble carbonates thereby uh decreasing uh, thereby removing the temporary hardness so whatever the temporary hardness you have there what you are going to do you have to remove the respect to dissolved calcium and magnesium hydrogen carbonates methods for removal of hardness first temporary hardness by boiling like calcium hydrogen carbonate ca hco3 taken twice if you try to boil you will generate ca co3 we can write down the soluble bicarbonates the soluble bicarbonates were converted into converted to insoluble carbonates and hydroxides like magnesium hydrogen carbonate will be converted into magnesium hydroxide upon boiling and hydroxides and thus and then the solution is subjected to filtration and then the solution is subjected to filtration like by boiling calcium hydrogen carbonate boiling produces cacio3 plus water plus co2 magnesium hydrogen carbonate upon boiling forms magnesium hydroxide plus co2 so now these are present as the insoluble impurities they can be removed by filtration and also by clarks process addition of calcium hydroxides like lime water you can add 
magnesium hydrogen carbonate and calcium hydrogen carbonate upon addition of CaOH second twice. Again, they form what? Respective carbonates and hydroxides. CaHCO3 second twice plus CaOH second twice will give CaCO3 which was insoluble. Similarly, MgHCO3 taken, taken twice, magnesium hydrogen carbonate will react with CaOH second twice, will form what? CaCO3 along with that MgOH second twice is also going to be formed along with that water is removed. We can take two CaCO3 because MgHCO3 second twice is there. So two CaCO3 means two CaOH second twice and hydrogens. 2 plus uh, 4, 6 are there. So here if I place 2, it will be balanced. MgHCO3 taken twice plus 2 CaOH taken twice gives 2 CaCO3 plus MgOH taken twice plus 2H2O. This is also insoluble, precipitate, insoluble, insoluble, insoluble. This is also insoluble. Okay. Like that, you can convert the respect to calcium hydrogen carbonates to respect to calcium carbonates or magnesium hydroxides, and thus you can remove them thereby removing the per, uh, temporary hardness. The permanent hardness is actually caused by what? Permanent hardness is actually caused by? Calcium and sulfate. Calcium and sulfates. Sulfates and chlorides. Yes or no? So methods of removal of hardness by permanent hardness. We have many techniques. By washing, uh, by using washing soda, that is using Na2CO3. So you can try to write the reaction CaCl2 plus Na2CO3, CaCl2 or MgCl2 also you can use. If you use MgCl2, MgCl2, Na2CO3 is nothing but washing soda, you will get MgCO3. Or you can have CaSO4, there can also be MgSO4. If you use MgSO4, you will get what? Along with CaCO3, you will get MgCO3. Because you are treating respect to calcium or magnesium sulfates or chlorides, these calcium and magnesium chlorides or sulfates, they will react with washing soda to form again same insoluble calcium carbonates or magnesium carbonates. These insoluble calcium carbonates or magnesium carbonates, which were actually present as PPT, they can be removed by filtration. They can be removed. Okay. You can write down. These can be removed. by filtration. CaCl2, MgCl2, CaSO4, MgSO4, all of those can be removed by filtration. And thus you will be having the, uh, once you have removed them, you will be having the respect to pure water. This is nothing but removal of permanent hardness, that is calcium chlorides, magnesium chlorides, calcium sulfate, magnesium sulfate by using washing soda. Next we can also use by using Kalgan. What is Kalgan? Kalgan is actually Na2, Na4, PO3 taken 6. You can say sodium hexametaphosphate is also nothing but Kalgan. The simple formula of sodium hexametaphosphate is Na6P6O18. That Na6P6O18 will actually exist as Na2, Na4, PO3 taken 6. This Na2, Na4, PO6 taken 6, uh, Na2, Na4, PO3 taken 6, that will give how many Na plus ions? 2 Na plus ions and Na4, PO3 taken 6, whole minus 2 ion. And now this is your Kalgan, it is added to hard water. In the hard water, we have what? Ca plus 2 ion or Mg plus 2 ion? Yes or no? The Ca plus 2 or Mg plus 2 ion are there. So metal ion is there, M plus 2 ion. What is this M plus 2? Metal can be calcium or magnesium. magnesium. And if you want to replace one of the calcium with the respect to sodium, like how many calcium are required to replace or how many sodium are required to replace one calcium or one magnesium? Two. 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 Because Ca and Mg present in the plus 2 form, Na will be present in plus 1 form. So loss of 2 Na plus will happen. And you will get what? Na2, M2, M2, PO3, whole 6, whole six. minus 2. And I have to again replace M plus 2. M is 
calcium or magnesium again loss of 2 na plus occurs forming m2 m2 po3 taken 6 whole minus 2 yes or no yes this is how the this is how you can actually remove the respective ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 ions like we have calcium sulfate or calcium chloride or magnesium sulfate or magnesium chloride that mg plus 2 or ca plus 2 ions they were actually taken by the complex anion thereby making the hard water soft the what you can say the ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 ions were taken away by complex anion complex anion and thus making the hard water soft making the hard water soft this is a second technique of removal of a permanent hardness that is by using kalgan sodium hexa metaphosphate and after this we also have the permutated process what is the permutated process permutated are like sodium alumina silicate yes or no sodium alumina silicates so you can have this formula permutated is hydrated sodium alumina silicates na2o dot al2o3 dot 2si2o2 dot xh2o or na2 al2 si2o8 dot xh2o you can also take the permutated as na2z simplest form you can take the permutated as na2z sodium aluminium silicate also you can take which is na al sio4 which can also be considered as naz sodium aluminium silicates alumina silicates you can also treat this as na al sio4 which can be equivalent to naz what happens these permutates whenever they are added to the hard water which contain calcium plus 2 or magnesium plus 2 ions like let us say naz naz or na2z first let us try it with respect to naz naz will be reacting with cacl2 what i can take naz will be reacting with cacl2 or you can write m plus 2 ion cacl2 or mgcl2 caso4 or mgso4 we can have m plus 2 ion that m plus 2 ion like naz means we have na plus and z minus m plus 2 has two plus charge so m plus 2 will take away the z minus so it will form what mz2 will be formed that means m plus 2 is taken away by permutated anion m plus 2 is taken away is taken away by permutated or you can consider the same uh, different other types of permutates are there nalsio4 is also a permutate where we have written naz you can also write uh, na2z if you have written na2z na2z will also react with m plus 2 ion what is m m is nothing but your calcium or magnesium so m plus 2 will be reacting like 2na plus and z minus 2 it forms mz here you can say m2 plus is taken away by is taken away by permutated so the ultimate role is we have to remove the respect to ca plus 2 ion or mg plus 2 ions which are present in water those ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 which are present in water they can be easily removed like you can do this reaction na2z plus cacl2 that ca plus 2 will take the respect to z forming caz s yes or no that means the respect to calcium plus 2 or magnesium plus 2 ions from the hard water have been taken away by the permutate like that the hard water has been converted to soft water but still the water uh, softened by this process they contain the impurity of anion they still have the impurity of anions right chlorides are there so that is why it is not again used for the uh, drinking purpose it has to be subjected to other technique where the anions are also purified and for regeneration of n2z we exactly do the reverse reaction nacl plus caz will form cacl2 plus na2z nacl plus uh, caz will form cacl2 plus naz water softened by this process contain the impurity of anion like cl minus is still there 
that is why this is not for drinking purpose this water purified by the permitted process that is not a, for a drinking purpose is that clear or not yes sir hard water which contains ca plus 2 and mg plus 2 those were actually taken by z minus to form respect to nazh and you have na plus ions lost like soft water is given regeneration regeneration means you simply add nacl to that particular uh, caz wherever we have and you will have ca plus 2 ions given out and the permeability is regenerated the ca plus 2 ions given out means we will be getting the respect to hard water we will be having the respect to hard water again methods for removal of hardness last method is by ion exchange method by ion exchange method or resin method yes or no here we'll have like the respect to rcoh you can do with the technique the process is used to remove both temporary and permanent hardness and both cation and anion of the hardness in this process both cation and anion they are both are going to be removed both cation and anion they are going to be removed it has two chambers like first one is cation exchange resin what is the first chamber cation exchange resin the chamber contain insoluble organic acids rcoh or rso3h having a joint molecule of hydrocarbon like hydrocarbon will be changed that rcoh or rso3h that will be reacting with nacl you can take r coh c double bond oh will be reacting with nacl na plus cl minus and this oh bond is going to be formed you will generate lost and rc double bond o minus na plus is formed from the respect to organic acid like rcoh or rso3h will form rc double bond o minus na plus or rc double bond o minus uh, ca plus 2 like rc o rc double bond o minus is there right that rc double bond o minus will develop new attraction with the respect to na plus to form rc double bond o minus na plus now what happens this rc double bond o o minus na plus that will be easily reacting with cacl2 that will be easily reacting with cacl2 it forms two rc double bond o minus it will develop electrostatic force of attraction with ca plus 2 ion and o minus c double bond r this is nothing but r c o o taken twice ca r c double bond o minus will be reacting with cacl2 to form r c double bond o o taken twice ca plus 2 h plus plus 2 cl minus here this oh bond cleavage may be slightly weaker that's why i have already cleaved the oh bond and forms the respect to sodium salt of carboxylic acid in the first step itself instead of the bond cleavage happening in the reaction where calcium chloride is there if you try to treat the organic acid or rso3h with the nacl first you will form respect to sodium salt of carboxylic acid that sodium salt of carboxylic acid you can treat with a hard water which contain ca plus 2 ions or mg plus 2 ions so the respective carboxylate will be reacting with ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 in the carboxylate we have minus 1 charge whereas in the ca plus 2 or mg plus 2 we have plus 2 charge so they will form like two carboxylates are required to neutralize plus 2 charge thereby rco taken by ca is formed along with that h plus and cl minus are going to be released out but again can i say this is causing the hardness the ca plus 2 and cl minus the ca plus 2 is taken by rco minus but cl minus is still in the reaction mixture or not yes sir yes sir yes. so can i say anionic impurities are still present after yes. passing through cationic exchange like by the ion exchange resin like cationic exchange resin will remove the respect to metal ions but anionic impurities are still present water become soft but contain the impurities of anion like chloride sulfate and hco3 minus so it is not directly fit for drinking purpose so then you have anionic exchange resin 
this chamber contains jain's organic molecule with basic groups like earlier we have acidic group rco minus that has picked up the metal ion now we have basic groups like rnh3 plus oh minus we can have rnh2 rnh2 will be reacting with respect to water lone pair of electron present on nitrogen that picks up the proton forming rnh3 plus along with that oh minus is released out this will be reacting with respect to x minus x can be respect to cl minus or so4 2 minus or hco3 minus that is the anion it will form like sulfate means we should have two x minus right we can check only cl minus or hco3 minus they will develop attraction with respect to ammonium ion or nh3 plus x minus is going to be formed so this chamber contain joint organic molecule with basic group this r nh3 plus group is there that will try to react with the chloride ions or hco3 minus ions and r nh3 plus two such species are required oh minus to react with sulfate and form r nh3 taken twice so4 r nh3 taken twice so4 that is going to be formed because sulfate has minus 2 this rnh3 plus only has positive plus 1 charge on nitrogen so like that whenever you have acidic group the acidic group will try to remove the cations from the hard water the basic groups will try to remove the anions from the hard water thereby both the cations and anions are removed this water is free from all mineral cations and anions and thus it is called as demineralized water this water is actually free from cations all mineral cations and all mineral anions that is why it is called as demineralized water there are no minerals present and that is why it can be used for the drinking purpose the ion exchange method we have a cation exchange resin anion exchange resin so the both the cations and anions both are removed and thereby whatever the water you are getting that is demineralized water and thus that water can be used for the drinking purpose is that clear or not yes sir yes so this is a respect to resin we have rcooh that is cation resins cations are removed out and respect to anions are still passing they are passing to the basic resin like uh, anionic exchange resin where we have anionic part with this respect to that we have the chlorides also removed out only h plus oh minus will be there the pure and soft water is going to be obtained finally like that we will be having the hard water which contains cl minus so4 2 minus ca plus 2 mg plus 2 all of these ions they are going to be removed by passing the two uh, two stages that is anionic exchange resin as well as cationic exchange resin and the same way you can actually regenerate the resin if you for the regeneration what you have to do we have to do the reverse reaction cation exchange resin means you can add hcl to respect to rcoh taken twice ca to form rcoh and cacl2 in the cationic exchange resin if you try to add acids that acid will be reacting with the respect to carboxylate to form rco minus h plus and cacl2 in the anionic exchange resin you try to add noh like that you will produce the respect to resin back respect to uh, acid and basic groups back this is the acid acidic group this is a basic group so this acidic and basic groups are regenerated back in the cationic resin cationic exchange resin as well as anionic exchange resin that is how the resin also can be regenerated back right yes sir yes sir yes right hard water when passed through ion exchange resin containing rcoh group becomes free from ca plus ca2 plus 2 ca2 plus right the next discussion of water is heavy water heavy water means what students d2 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 is heavy water like how, what is the method of preparation of heavy water like if you have water impure water we know in the impure water the hydrogen is present h11 protium is present in the 99 percentage or 98 percentage 
the sum amount of water molecule may contain deuterium. So, if you try to do the electrolysis of water continuously, 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 what happens? If you have taken water and I am supplying the electrical energy continuously, in this water we have, like we have taken impure water, this is your respective anode, this is a cathode. We have H plus ions and OH minus ions. We have D plus ions and OD minus ions. But which are more H plus and OH minus oh, are great because H2O is more when compared to D2O. The impure water, impure water we have taken, impure water which contain H2O plus D2O, H2O will be giving H plus and OH minus, D2O will be giving D plus and OD minus. Yes or no? H2O will be giving H plus and OH minus, D2O will be giving D plus and OD minus. These H plus ions will be moving towards the ne negatively charged electrode that is cathode. Similarly, D plus will move. OH minus and o OD minus, they will move towards positively charged electrode that is anode. H plus and D plus, they are moving towards cathode. Upon reaching cathode, they deposit on the cathode or not. But yes, when sir. you compare to H plus and D plus, which has a greater tendency for the moment? H plus. H yes. plus because D plus and OD minus, they have higher mass, greater the mass, lesser will be the mobility. H plus and OH minus, they will move. So if I, but which are greater in quantity? H plus and OH minus are greater in quantity. So if I try to do the repeatedly electrolysis, if I repeat the electrolysis many times, then I'll end up in the solution. In the solution, what do we have? D plus and OD D minus. D plus and OD minus. D plus and OD minus is nothing but D2O. That means on electrolysis of water, on repeated electrolysis of water, on repeated electrolysis of impure water, we will end up with a D2O, which is nothing but your heavy water. Repeated electrolysis of impure water. On electrolysis of water impure, H2O dissociate into H plus and OH minus, while a fractional part of D2O will also dissociate into D plus and OD minus. Because OD bond is a stronger bond when compared to OH bond, the dissociation is also weaker. So OD, OD minus and D plus due to higher mass and less mobility, they will not go and deposit. Okay. Why H plus and OH minus will move towards cathode and anode? Because D plus and OD minus cannot move because of higher mass. So they remain in the solution. You have to repeat this process many times. So at least six times we have to remove. At least six times we have to remove this, uh, repeat this process upon other upon further repetition and finally we'll end up with D2O. Finally we'll end up with D2O. This is the anode cathode. We have O2 and H2 formed, O2 and H2 formed. Left out is D2O. Yes or no, impure water we have taken and repeated the electrolysis and uh, whatever the left out we have in the solution that is nothing but your D2O. Right? Yes, sir. Compounds of hydrogen. In that compounds of hydrogen, we have heavy water D2O. And let us look at the physical and chemical properties of heavy water. So, the physical properties of D2O, if you think of, nearly all the physical constants are higher than the corresponding values of water. Whatever the physical constant you are looking for water, all those constants, they will be high for D2O when compared to H2O, except the moment. Moment is weaker because of heavy mass. Chemical properties of D2O. D2O is chemically similar to H2O, but D2O reacts more slowly than H2O. Why? Due to stronger OD bonds. CaC2 will be reacting with D2O to form CaOH taken twice plus C2D2. Similar to that, you have reaction. CaC2 plus H2O will form CaOH taken twice plus C2H2. CaOH taken twice plus C2H2 is going to be formed or not? Yes. Na2O plus D2O will form what? 2 NaOD. Mg3N2 plus D2O will form MgOD taken twice plus Nd3. SO3 plus D2O will form D2SO4. These are the different types of reactions. And we can also have the reaction with the uh, aluminum carbide that is Al4C3 
will be reacting with D2O, 12D2O, will form what? 3CD4, along with that, ALOD taken thrice, 4 ALOD taken thrice is going to be obtained. So Na2O will be reacting with D2O to form NaOD. Mg3N2 will react with the D2O to form magnesium hydroxide. Like here we have heavy heavy water. So MgOD taken twice plus Nd3 instead of NH3. SO3 will react with D2O to form D2SO4 instead of SO3 plus H2O form H2SO4. Okay, similar type of reactions, but the reactivity is less. Is everything clear so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Next to the commercially important compound, next to commercially important compound is hydrogen peroxides. Methods of preparation of hydrogen peroxide, if you can think of, you can form what? Acidifying barium peroxide and removing excess water by evaporation under reduced pressure, H2O2 is actually produced. Like a barium, ox barium peroxide, if you take, and if you try to treat the barium peroxide with H2SO4, you form barium sulfate and H2O2 and H2O. And before going to this particular reaction, you can also think of other perspectives. Like similar to the reaction of D2O. Yes or no? We have seen the reaction of D2O, right? That the CAC2 reacts with D2O to form CaOH taken twice plus C2D2. That C2D2 and CaOH taken twice, you can combine with S-block. CaOH taken twice can also be obtained from S-block by treating CaO plus H2O. Like that, some combination reactions can also be understood. So that is why these reactions are very important. Like I can combine this, I can produce the CaOH taken twice from S-block. I can have C2H2. Earlier I have C2H2, that, that I can do the respect to cyclic polymerization to form benzene. And I can include these reactions into organic chemistry as well. So be careful with that respect. And if you go with the hydrogen peroxide, acidifying barium peroxide and removing excess water by evaporation under reduced pressure produces H2O2 as under. Like BaO2.8H2O plus H2S4 forms barium sulfate plus H2O2 plus H2O. So you have to remove the excess water by evaporation under reduced pressure. Then only you will form respect to H2O2. If not, the dissociation of H2O2 can also occur because H2O2 is not a very stable because of the presence of peroxyl linkage. We can also do the electrolytic process that H2SO4 you can take and do the respect to electrolysis. Like 50% H2S4, H2S4 gives H plus and H2S4 minus ions. The H plus ions will be reacting with electrons to form H2 gas. This will happen at cathode. And at anode, what happens? At anode, we have HSO4 minus ions uh, reaching to form. HSO4 minus ion will be reaching the anode since anode is positively charged. It will form H2S2O8. H2S2O8 is going to be formed. This H2S2O8 upon treating with water will form H2SO4 along with that H2SO5 is formed. What is H2S2O8? Peroxidisulfuric acid. Yes, H2S2O8. You try to draw a structure. What is the oxygen state? Like two hydrogens, two into plus one, two sulfur, two into X, eight oxygens, eight into minus two is equal to zero. So 2x is equal to 16 minus 2, that is 14, x is equal to plus 7. What is the maximum oxygen state possible for sulfur? Plus, plus 6. six. Plus 6. When compared to plus 6, like the calculated oxygen state is greater than the maximum oxygen state. So can I say there's a peroxy linkage? Yes. yes. We have two sulfurs and we have a peroxy linkage means we have S O O S linkage. And we have S double bond O, S double bond O, S double bond O, S double bond O, OH and OH. What type of basicity this has? Basicity will be 2 because we have 2 H plus ions. H2S2O8 upon treatment with water, it forms sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, what is the structure? 
H2SO4, S double bond O, S double bond O, OH and OH. What is the basicity of sulfuric acid again? Two. Again two. Along with sulfuric acid, we, we form H2SO5. What is H2SO5 called as? Caros acid. Caros acid. What is H2SO8 also called as? Marshall's acid. This H2SO5, try to calculate the oxygen state. Sulfur, 2 into plus 1, plus 1 sulfur, 1 into x, plus 5 oxygens, 5 into minus 2 is equal to 0. So what is x? x will be equal to 10 minus 2, that is plus 8. eight. Calculated oxygen state greater than the maximum oxygen state. So what type of structure you have? Peroxy linkage will be there. But do we have more than one sulfur atom or only one sulfur? One sulfur. Only one sulfur. So we have sulfur, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen linkage. SOOH linkage is there. And we have SO double bond. Oh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 oxygens, 1 sulfur, 2 hydrogens. Base city will be two. 2 again. Okay. At a cathode, the H plus ions will react with each other to form H2 gas. At anode, HSO4 minus 2 HSO4 minus will form H2S2O8, whose structure will be like this. Upon reacting with H2O, since it has a peroxy linkage, it forms H2SO4 and H2SO5, whose structures have been given. This H2SO5, since again it has peroxy linkage, it reacts with the water to form H2SO4 and the nascent oxygen, whatever it is there, that is given to water to form H2O2. Understood this or not? HSO4 minus will be converting into H2S2OH when upon HSO4 minus upon reaching the respect to anode, it forms H2S2OH. That H2S2OH upon treating with water, it forms sulfuric acid and caros acid. Caros acid again has a respective peroxy linkage. So upon treatment with water, it forms sulfuric acid and H2O2. That is how H2O2 can be obtained by the electrolytic process of uh, respect to sulfuric acid. Is that clear or not? Yes, sir. These are the respective reactions and structures of all types of acids have been given to you. So let us stop it here. Next class, we'll be proceeding further to look at the few other properties of H2O2 and then we'll start with the S block. Fine. Thank you all everyone. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.